Let's start off by looking at minimum and maximum values again using the World Bank health expenditure data set we used earlier. Have the World Bank data set open and make a copy if you haven't already. Let's add a new sheet by clicking on this plus symbol in the bottom left hand corner. Let's leave the first column in the first row blank and in the second one let's press equals to start a formula. Let's switch back to our first sheet and let's select the first value in the, in the first row with data. Press enter. Magically you'll see the value is now displayed in the second sheet. Why do we do it like this instead of copying and pasting? This way it will automatically update your new sheet if you change anything in the original. Now, let's say the first column is going to be what we calculate. Let's start off calculating the minimum values. So let's label this minimum. Let's click in the cell, type equals, and let's start typing in the minimum formula. Once again, it is asking us to select the values it wants, we want it to use, so we're going to go back to our sheet, and in this case, we're going to select the entire column. You can do this by clicking on the gray column label area. Once you're done, remember to close your brackets and then press enter. You can see it is now displaying the minimum value from that column. Let's do the same thing with maximum. Always remember to close the brackets. You'll now see that we have the minimum and maximum values for the GDP, which is the column we selected. The nice thing we can do with this is we can duplicate these values. Can you see this blue square in the corner? Once again, we can drag this to duplicate the formula. You'll see now it is showing us all the headings that we previously had in our other sheet. We can do the same with these formulas. So now we have created another sheet which shows us the minimum and maximum values for each one of our columns in our previous sheet. This is a much tidier way of doing minimum and maximum values in a new sheet without risking losing your original data. Did you notice that some of the minimum and maximum values are zero? Do you believe there are countries not spending money on healthcare? There probably aren't. The zeros are because they are empty cells. Properly handling missing values is an important step in data cleaning and analysis. Hardly ever are large data sets complete, and you have to find a strategy to deal with the missing bits. In this walkthrough, we will create a complex formula. We will do so with an iterative process. This means one little formula at a time. If you follow us through, you'll notice you can create quite complex formulas and results simply by taking it step by step. To deal with empty cells, we'll have to fix parts of our calculations in the World Bank dataset. So to, so to start off, let's just add a new sheet we can play with. Let's go to our World Bank dataset and copy the first few rows so we can play. Let's paste this into our new sheet. We can see that we've got some missing data already in the first few rows. American Samoa, Andorra, as well as Aruba are missing the GDP information. Let's say we wanted to calculate the GDP per capita. Let's create a new row and call it GDP per capita. Now let's think about what we want to do. If either of the values we are working with, in this case GDP or population, is not a number, then we don't want to display the total. 
Or to put it another way, only if a value for both GDP and population exists do we want to carry out the calculation. Otherwise, it should leave the cell blank. The formula to express this condition is if. This type of formula is called Boolean logic, and essentially it works like this. If something is x, then do y. Let's try and type it in. The formula requires three things. It requires a condition or a logical expression, a value if it's true, and a value if it's false. So in our case, we want to say that if GDP and population are both numbers, then use the formula to calculate GDP per capita. If either is not a number, then leave the cell blank. So let's fill in the bits that we do know. So let's say condition, in here for the moment, comma, what we wanted to do if both are numbers, so that would be the, the formula. So that would be take the GDP and divide it by the population to give us the GDP per capita. If they are not a number, we just want to leave it blank. So what we'll do is just leave a blank space. And let's close our brackets. So now we just need to work out the condition. Remember that we want both the GDP and population values to be numbers. The formula to see whether a cell is a number is is number. Let's try it out. If you type in equals is number and then select a cell, let's use this GDP value, close the brackets, press enter, you'll see it returns a value of true. If we copy this formula down to a row where there is not a number, we can see it returns a value of false. We need to combine the results of both is number for GDP and is number for population together. The formula to do so is AND. This will simply say true if both of them is num numbers or false if either one or both of them is not a number. So let's try and add this in here. Let's type in AND, open brackets. We already have the is number for a GDP. It's comma. Let's type is number again. And then let's select our population cell. Close the brackets. Close the larger brackets. Press enter. At the moment it's still returning the same values and I can copy this formula up to here. So now we have our condition. What we need to do is combine the condition with the rest of our statement. So let's just simply copy and paste it. So we know the condition needs to go over here. So let's highlight the, the placeholder we typed in and paste it in. Now remember what's happening is that we were using different cells. It's still pointing to these cells. So what we need to do is change this to be C2 and change this one to be D2 so that it's reading the right row. Now you can see that it's referring to the correct cells. Now that we're done with our formula, we can press enter. So you can see what this is doing is checking if both of these are numbers and performing the calculation. Let's copy this formula down and see what happens with our rows that are blank. And you'll see what's happened is it has just returned a blank space. Try it out and experiment with this. Creating complex formulas can be easy if you just do it step by step.